Fertility hey guys, Friday. it's me, Katie Lee, CGC, and today is Fertility Friday. Today I'm going to be talking about bladed ovums or anembryonic pregnancies. I'm going to try and make this a short and sweet video just explaining exactly what it is. But first of all, I mean, what is this name blighted ovums? Like blight literally just reminds me of that plant disease. Um, and it sounds terrible. Ovum is a mature egg, but this isn't a bladed ovum is not an egg that's ruined. It's more than that. Um, so I much prefer the term an embryonic pregnancy because that's exactly what it is. This is a gestational sac that is formed, but there's no fetal pole inside. There's no embryo growing inside of the gestational sac. And here, let me just switch to screen share and show you an image of exactly what a blighted ovum looks like on ultrasound. Okay, here are some images from Google, and you can see that this is an empty sac, essentially. So a fertilized egg implanted in the uterus, but did not develop an embryo. That's why they're also called anembryonic pregnancies. Normally at about five to six weeks of pregnancy, an embryo should be present, but you can see these are you know, empty sacs where there is no embryo, there's no fetal uh, pole that you can see developing. So that's pretty much the gist of it. They all look pretty similar because we are just looking at an empty sac. In contrast, this is a good ultrasound at six weeks, and not everyone has ultrasounds at six weeks, but if you do because you were using assisted reproductive technology, hopefully if your dating's right, at six weeks you should see a little couple millimeter long uh, fetal pole forming or that little embryo blob there. So there you have it. It really does just look like an empty sac, and it's a depressing thing I've seen on my ultrasounds a few times. I want to go over some of the other types of miscarriages that can happen and some of the terms that are thrown around just really quick. So a miscarriage is generally any pregnancy loss before 20 weeks gestation. A stillbirth would be a pregnancy loss after that point in time. Then among miscarriages, there are different terms like a blighted ovum slash an embryonic pregnancy, a chemical or biochemical miscarriage, biochemical loss, biochemical pregnancy, lots of different terms or ways to say it. That is just a pregnancy loss that happens after you've had a positive pregnancy test either urine or blood, but before you have an ultrasound to confirm that there is a pregnancy in the uterus or a pregnancy in general. And then a clinical miscarriage would be a miscarriage where there is either ultrasound evidence that there indeed was a pregnancy or maybe histological evidence like after a miscarriage and tissues comes out and is examined. A big question I've always had is why do an embryonic pregnancies even happen? And nobody really has an answer. Kind of the same answer you get for any type of first trimester pregnancy loss that a good portion of, of an embryonic pregnancies are likely due to chromosome imbalances, but that does not explain all of them. And a cause is oftentimes never determined. So you actually can do products of conception genetic testing on a blighted ovum, like if you have a DNC to remove that tissue from your uterus. I've had one done on a blighted ovum and it was determined to be chromosomally normal. So I don't have an explanation for why that embryo never developed as it should have. I was also trying to figure out how common an embryonic pregnancies are. I did find a few papers that seem to say that maybe about 50% or half of all of miscarriages in the first trimester uh, before the first, you know, within the first 12 weeks or so are perhaps an embryonic pregnancies. How might an anembryonic pregnancy present? Well, it could present like, like often first trimester miscarriages do with bleeding and with cramping and other signs of miscarriage, but it can also present as a missed miscarriage. It can be silent. So you can continue to have symptoms of being pregnant. You can still feel like crap and have morning sickness, um, still have breast tenderness and all of those other symptoms while you have a blighted ovum. So unfortunately, I wish it was the case that symptoms in pregnancy meant that things were going perfectly, but it doesn't, it doesn't guarantee a perfect pregnancy. The way that an anembryonic pregnancy might be diagnosed in the doctor's office is you may go for your first ultrasound. Um, and first ultrasounds can really vary. If you're followed by an IVF clinic, it might be super early, like five or six weeks. But if you're just seeing your routine OB provider and don't have a history of miscarriage, it might be somewhere between eight and 12 weeks. If they take a look on ultrasound and see that there is an empty gestational sac without an embryo, that would be a clue that what could be going on is a blighted ovum. Uh, they may also tell you that your dating may be wrong. You may not know exactly when the embryo implanted and maybe you're a little further behind in pregnancy than what you actually thought. So they may ask you to come again one or two weeks later to see if an embryo starts to develop in that gestational sac. 
And if the embryo is still not present at that second ultrasound, then that confirms that what we have is indeed an embryonic pregnancy. I want to just quickly discuss the three management options that are often provided to patients who are found to have an anembryonic pregnancy. One is what's called expectant management. So the patient is followed without any medical intervention and just waits for the tissue to spontaneously pass, um, for the miscarriage to happen naturally, essentially. And during that time, the patient may have repeat transvaginal ultrasounds and repeat or serial HCGs to make sure that her HCG hormone levels are going down and to make sure that the tissue is passing. And sometimes this works, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you can wait weeks and weeks and weeks, and you might be bleeding a little bit, but that bleeding can stop, and there still may be retained tissue, and you may need to move on to another option. Second option that is typically presented is medical management. This is mesoprostol or Cytotec. That is a medication that you can take vaginally or orally, depending on what your doctor recommends, and it can start the process of, of passing the tissue. I have tried that for multiple miscarriages and it was such a pain in the butt for me. And this is not the case for everyone, but I took one dose of it, a second dose of it, a third dose of it, begged for a fourth dose of it because it still wasn't working and I just wanted to avoid a DNC. Um, so it's an option. It works for some people, but not everyone. The final intervention is, is surgical treatment, surgical intervention, a procedure like a DNC where your doctor can remove the tissue from your uterus. Uh, the benefits of DNC, in my opinion, are that it's really quick. It's really, really quick, and it gets it over with. Um, you know, it is still possible to have retained tissue after a DNC, but that doesn't happen often. And it was just a relief for me after having some miscarriages that were drawn out six to eight weeks long of constant monitoring, um, going into the OB's office with all of those pregnant women for ultrasounds and for HCG blood draws and hearing insensitive comments that I know were on accident from the phlebotomist or from other people in the waiting room or the front desk staff. Um, I really liked once I had my first DNC avoiding all of that. Obviously it is, you know, essentially a surgery. So there are risks involved too. If you have recently been diagnosed with an anembryonic pregnancy, first of all, I am so sorry. Absolutely stinks. I fear seeing that empty sack on the ultrasound screen. And second off, I really recommend talking about all of your options with your doctor. Talk about all of the different options and what the pros and cons are so you can decide what's best for you because the answer for management is not the same for every single person. All right, guys, let me know if you have any questions about blighted ovums or anembryonic pregnancies or anything else about miscarriage and please like this video and subscribe. Take care, bye.